We all want more fish tanks. Some of us admit it, others of us don't. But when it comes down to it, we aren't the problems. Our problems are our families, and they are the ones that prevent us from getting more fish tanks. So today, I wanna to share with you guys five ways to negotiate more tanks with your families that will hopefully leave you with some healthy relationships afterwards. Now granted, I'm not liable for any divorces or breakups or anything that comes about that, and different families have different healthies. So, you know, take that as you will, but make sure you stay tuned to number four, because I think that's the best one on this list and the one that will get you more tanks for sure. Like, this works very, very well. So let's begin. So initially, when we were trying to get more tanks, I think the best thing that we can do is to have a beautiful tank. Nothing is going to say more things about what other aquariums are going to be like than you having an already beautiful tank. But if you have a poorly maintained tank, that tank is going to speak bounds to what the other tanks are going to be like and is going to discourage your family from letting you have more tanks. Take, for instance, my situation. When Shelby and I got married and moved in together, Shelby knew that I wanted to keep aquariums. She knew that I really liked them and that was something that I wanted to have some. But her mental image of what an aquarium would be like was influenced by my dad's Central American tanks and my own African cichlid tanks. And these tanks weren't bad, they were good tanks, but they were more fish centric and a tank that a fish lover is going to enjoy much more than someone who isn't into the aquarium hobby. But upon seeing this tank, a planet tank, she was much more drawn into it and really, really enjoyed it. She would sit in her chair and she would be reading and she would sort of glance up and look over at the tank and just sort of watch it for a little bit and then feel guilty about looking at it. She was initially opposed to something like this and finally sort of growing on her to the point that she would just sit down and just would sit and watch the aquarium for a couple minutes at a time, which is more than what I expected to begin with. She was genuinely surprised that a fish tank could look this way and look this good. And that made it very easy when I wanted to get more tanks to simply say that this is what I created, this is what I can make again. I think this would be a great thing to have. Would you be okay with that? And in creating a beautiful tank first and being able to show to her what is possible, she said yes to that, that I could get more tanks. So the second way is to include them when you're choosing fish. Now I'm not saying that they choose all the fish in your aquariums. That would be preposterous and absurd. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that. What I'm trying to say is that when you go to start an aquarium and you know that I want to have a pistos and I specifically want a triple red cockatoides in there and that's, that is what I want. Great, go for that. You pick that fish. But when it comes to choosing what other fish go in there with it, the corridors that are along the bottom or the tetras that are up top, go into the store with them and say these fish work well with uh, the pistols that we're keeping you can choose the fish that are up top from these three fish and you can choose the fish that are going to be on the bottom from these three fish and that way you're getting them involved in the process of choosing their fish so that when they get home they care how are the fish doing how are the fish doing today oh can i feed my fish or can i feed our fish i mean i'm sorry and so you start getting them more and more involved in it so that when the idea of a second tank comes around, they might be very excited. It's like, actually, I really like that other corridor that I didn't get to pick out last time. And if we get another tank, then we can include that corridor with that dither fish. And maybe we could keep this one. And so that is a snowballing effect where they get to be involved in the process. You still get to have more tanks and it's win-win for both people. And you get to share your hobby, which is a fantastic thing. At least in my opinion, maybe not for you guys, but for me, it's awesome. <laughs> The third way is to include them in setting up the tank. Now this is in the same vein of including them in choosing the fish, but this is a, a little bit more dicey, if you would say, because you're gonna have to live with how the tank is decorated and scaped, but it could also be a great learning experience and an experience you get to share with one another. So they could be involved in choosing out the plants or the decorations or the gravels, and you can be able to guide as how much or how little you want them to be involved. But the biggest thing is to get them involved and get them interested in it. And you could tell them that, hey, we can't actually do that with this tank because we can't put crushed coral with our epistos because it's different parameters for them. But if you wanted to use this crushed coral and the Texas Holy Rock, we could go down the African cichlid realm and we could have a tank like that. And you can start planting these ideas of these other tanks that are possible because you can't do everything in one tank. And I think if you start conveying that to them and you create a beautiful tank that they are involved in creating and stocking the fish with, then your likelihood of being able to have more tanks and negotiating more tanks when that time comes around is a lot higher than not having them be involved at all. And they just see your hobby as a waste of money and a waste of time. They don't appreciate it for what it is and what it is for us who are keeping fish. Really quickly, if you guys have enjoyed this video so far, I'd ask you guys to subscribe to the channel. And if you guys are interested, check out some of the videos that I have on my channel because they're all pertaining to aquariums. If you guys have liked this one, you guys will probably like some of the other ones. And with that, let's get into the fourth tip, which I think is the best tip of all of them. The fourth way to negotiate more tanks is to actually negotiate for the space that the tanks inhabit rather than the actual number of tanks. 
if you start off with negotiating for a specific number of tanks, if you want to increase the number of tanks that you're going to have, which you're probably bound to do, you're going to have to go back and constantly be talking about how many more tanks you're going to be getting, where are these tanks going to go, all these other very practical questions that need to be answered. Whereas if you negotiate a space to begin with, you can utilize that space however you see fit. You can use it for one tank, you can use it for seven tanks, you can use it for 10 tanks. You negotiated that space rather than negotiating for a specific number of tanks. So I actually implemented this when I was negotiating my fish rack in the second bedroom. I negotiated a space rather than a set number of tanks. And actually before I sat down to film this, I asked Shelby, had I asked you if I could have seven tanks in the second bedroom, would you have been okay with that? And she said, heck no, I would have not been about that. But since I negotiated a space, she knew that that space was gonna be used for my fish tanks and that I could use that space however I saw fit for my hobby at that time. If I wanted to have three 40 gallon breeders in there, I could. If I wanted to have a 40 gallon breeder and six five gallons, I could. But that tank number can change inside that space without having to go back and renegotiate the number of tanks that I was allowed to have because I already negotiated for that space and I could use that space how I saw fit with the changing interest that I have. And that's why I think out of all of these, this is the best one for us to incorporate is to negotiate for space rather than negotiate for a specific number of tanks. So the fifth way to negotiate more aquariums is to negotiate through rapidly breeding fish. Now I admit that this is a rather low blow and a little dirty of a move, but we're getting desperate at this point because all of our other attempts to create more tanks for ourselves have failed. We have failed in all other ways and this is our last hope. And that second step, if you include your spouse in choosing the fish that you are picking and you direct them towards live bears and they pick a particular strain of guppies and you put that particular strain of guppies into a 10 gallon tank. We all know because we're excellent fish keepers that that population of guppies is going to outgrow that 10 gallon tank and eventually something will have to give and we have to either get more tank space, another tank, or we're gonna have to get rid of some of these fish. And if we have made sure to try to get our spouses invested and interested in these fish, they're gonna be watching all these babies growing up and really gonna enjoy that. And they're not necessarily probably gonna to wanna to get rid of those fish. They're gonna to wanna to keep those fish. So they're, they might go along with the idea of getting a 20 gallon tank and putting those guppies into there and a large enough tank. And now you have a 10 gallon tank that you have all the equipment for that you can then be able to put another fish into there. And since they don't have very good resale values, you can convince them not to have to resell it because you're basically just losing money at that point. But when you take that 10 gallon tank, make sure you get them involved again and choosing out a fish. Okay, this last fish bred very rapidly with live bears. We're not gonna go down that route again. Let's go down this route. But you go down a route and direct it down a route that you know that these fish are going to produce a lot of babies like plecos or uh, apistos or things of that nature. And then all of a sudden you have a ton of apistos or a ton of plecos. And now you need a larger tank for all those apistos and plecos. And that guppy colony that you had initially outgrew their 20 gallon tank and now needs a 40 gallon breeder. And slowly but surely you start amassing more and more tanks because the fish keep breeding and breeding and breeding. You need more and more tanks to accommodate them. And eventually you have uh, a very large collection of fish tanks. Now I can't guarantee when your spouse is gonna catch on to you or how happy they're gonna be when you did this, knowing full well what you know and how things were gonna work out, but at least you get more tanks, right? <laughs> Additionally, if you guys have negotiated more tanks, first off, congratulations. I'm glad it's successful. I'm glad I was able to help you. And now you're probably trying to figure out how to decorate all these aquariums that you have. I actually made a video about how I decorate my aquariums on a budget, and I'll leave that video here for you guys to check out now, and I'll see you guys over there. Have a blessed day. See ya.